In yesterday's speech announcing the extension of India's national lockdown till 3rd May, India's Prime Minister Mr. Narendra Modi requested citizens to download the Arogya Setu app. The Arogya Setu app is India's contact tracing solution, which is receiving considerable promotion by the Indian government's machinery and has even been praised as an initiative by international organizations like the World Bank. According to our analysis, however, the application remains a privacy minefield uh, and it does not adhere to principles of purpose uh, limitation, data minimization, transparency, and accountability. On April 13th, the Internet Freedom Foundation released a working paper on privacy prescri prescriptions for technology deployment during COVID-19. It is a comprehensive working paper which analyzes Indian and international discourse to provide concrete recommendations on different complex issues which are likely to remain uh, relevant in the technology sphere over the course of uh, this pandemic. Uh, our analysis finds that the Arogya Setu app in particular is inconsistent with the right to privacy, is probably a risk toward a permanent system of mass surveillance. And to remedy these risks, we suggest concrete recommendations which the government may adopt. But first, what is contact tracing? Contact tracing occurs in three steps, namely contact identification, contact listing, and contact follow-up. Contact tracing in general has been a pillar which helps public health officials in containing the pace and spread and transmission of a virus. But with the increasing adoption of smartphones and its increasing ubiquity, governments across the world have been thinking about ways to leverage the personal information collected by these devices to aid with ra rapid contact tracing. As a result, both governments and other groups have either released or are planning to release or are in development phases of smartphone apps which use Bluetooth beacons or GPS signals to log interactions between different users' devices in the hopes of figuring out who may or may not be at risk of exposure to the novel virus. But what is this risk? Well, with the creation of such systems come new risks of institutionalization of mass surveillance. Critically, India is uniquely disadvantaged because it, it lacks a comprehensive data protection law, has outdated surveillance and interception laws, which are inconsistent with the right to privacy, and lack any meaningful proposals for reform which will uh, amend or help the situation. And whereas in domains like disaster relief, uh, most apps which are purported as contact tracing technologies often devolve into systems of movement control and lockdown enforcement. So how do we prevent these risks? Well, such systems need to consider embedding the following principles amongst a host of others which the working papers capture uh, which the working paper captures rather comprehensively first the usage of these applications should be voluntary and should remain in complete control of users and must also serve the interests of users all data collected by these applications must be stored locally on people's devices this data must be encrypted in a robust manner. No government department should be able to access it at a later point. So, and therefore there must be steps made to ensure that nothing is stored in a central server. Next, governments must appreciate that any data from location information to proximity confirmations to health status to whether they have been placed in isolation is sensitive personal information. And therefore, any measures must respect this and be consistent with the right to privacy. And when it comes to privacy, privacy by design is more than just assurances that phone numbers are not recorded or assurances that data is encrypted or assurances that da data has been anonymized or that the use of, uh, use of the app is quote-unquote voluntary and based on consent. Because 
not only do most of these uh, uh, techniques have known uh, most of these measures have known techniques of circum circumvention but also uh, such uh, such claims must be uh, accompanied with great transparency in fact governments must ensure that such programs adhere to two key principles strict limitations in terms of collection and duration of the program every step of the way and comprehensive ed- evidence based justifications for the program every step of the way well when it comes to the arogya setu app itself when we compare it to other models specifically singapore's trace together application and the massachusetts institute of technology's private kit safe path initiative we find that the arogya setu app is subpar in the following ways one the purpose appears to be more than just disease control unlike other countries which is li- limited to just responding to public health the concerned public health outbreak two instead of it being the primary agency which is involved in responses or the use of this tech india's health ministry is role appears to be minimal three there is scope for these systems to be used for law enforcement lockdown control or cr- criminal investigation four there is no consistency in these systems with the principle of minimization which includes data minimization five due to a lack of transparency it enables opaque cra- practices of government which can lead to discretion and impunity of the of authorities five unsupervised algorithms may take decisions which affect people's rights including whether they can take public transport go to work or, or move around in their community six there is no provision which enables accountability of government seven there is no scheme to audit the government's practices the code that they deploy deploy or ensure that they delete data as indicated eight th- this system has a clear and palpable risk of becoming a permanent system of surveillance because there is no reference to any inclusion of a sunset clause and finally using anonymization as a justification for permanent data analysis systems is a is a threat since there is no disclosure of protocols as to how this data is being anonymized and how it's being protected against re- reidentification and in our working paper iff addresses all of these risks and many more and undertakes very comprehensive cross jurisdictional analysis uh, and also very comprehensive case studies uh, eventually the uh, paper sets out a series of 17 recommendations to ensure that even in contact tracing people's informational privacy is protected during these uncer- uncertain and rather extraordinary times uh, please uh, do take the time to visit www.internetfreedom.in or our forum which is forums.internetfreedom.in over there you can check out not only our working paper but accompanying explainers which we are developing and publishing on the go to make it an easier and more digestible document to go through uh if you like such content please feel free to like this video uh subscribe to our channel and we will continue to come out with some co- such content uh, more regularly moving forward